Oh, I'm so glad you could join us here today. Always great to visit with you about our ag commodity markets. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the ag commodity trade. Well, let's take a look at, well, what the setup is today by bringing in Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions, and he is based in Springfield, Missouri. And Brian, great to visit with you. Hope you had a good Easter holiday and hope everybody out there did that has tuned in here this morning. Um, over the weekend, now we actually had a little bit of information. For one thing, we had NOPA crush numbers that came out last Friday, correct? That is correct. So they, they came out on Friday, um, pretty strong crush numbers as far as meal goes, right in line with expectations, well above uh, last month and year ago levels. Probably the big surprise was oil stocks not as large as expected, showing better demand trends. And so we've seen um, overnight and or to early this morning, oil gain against meal shares with meal actually trading lower. So some, some nice spread activity there. Um, also on Friday, there were some big private export sale announcements and it was all soybeans, uh, 389,000 soybeans sold to China. And um, that was kind of split between the old and new crop marketing years. There was also a sale and it's one of those where it was received during the reporting period and then sold to China about 272,000 soybeans and then again another uh, couple cargo sale 177,000 tons I believe to an unknown destination all announced on Friday and all soybeans so market uh, had a you know a positive reaction to that on Sunday night plus we're putting in some premium as uh, the forecast shows additional snow coming into that spring wheat belt Minneapolis wheat up sharply again overnight and uh, corn moving higher as well and, and mainly that's due to the cold temperatures that we're going to see it may allow farmers to get into the fields later this week but it looks like the emergence is going to be very slow as cold temperatures kind of dominating the region through the rest of this month so we're looking at corn right now and that nearby may contract rang the bell look at that may got as high as 802 and three quarters it broke through that eight dollar threshold and it had a last trade here on the Globex market as we got into the morning. It held on to that eight dollars and a half cent. It was ten and a quarter cents higher. So there you have it. We finally did uh, reach eight dollars and uh, more new contract highs. I see overnight. We had December corn eight and three quarters higher at seven forty four per bushel. That was just a penny off of its overnight high there. So the spread actually widened out about a penny and a half, almost two cents in that overnight trade. The soybeans that Brian was talking about, we had the May contract 11 and a quarter higher at 16.93 and a half. The uh, July 7 and three quarters higher at 16.73. November up five and a quarter at 15.06 and three quarters. Uh, Brian, you were telling me earlier uh, last week that the May contract is losing interest right now. Is that right? Yeah, we're getting into uh, at the end of the month, first notice day against that April future. So um, we're going to see open interest and volume start to come out of the May contract and traders will be starting to roll into July or uh, even August, September, November contracts for soybeans. And this will happen across all the grain markets with the May contract. So corn, wheat, uh, meal, oil, all will be affected by this roll uh, as you don't want to be long going into first notice day. You really can't be long unless you're a, a commercial entity and so the fund traders will get out of the way of that and they'll do that over a couple week period here as we go into the end of the month that's correct okay so we have about a week and a half or a little more left to go so i mean meal overnight uh as you mentioned let's go with the july and that was actually down a dollar 60 at 454.10 per ton and then you mentioned that soybean oil trade here it was higher july was 70 higher at 77 uh, 59 in that overnight trade. Now let's jump over to that wheat trade and it seemed to perk up again overnight. Starting in Chicago, you had that July contract there gaining 21 cents, Brian, at 11.25 and a half. That was a pretty sizable jump right there. In the Kansas City market, of course, things are still dry in the southern and uh, high plains regions. You had July gaining 20 cents overnight at 11.77 and a quarter. And in the Minneapolis wheat, where they're having a tough time getting that crop in the ground now this year, obviously, uh, July was 24 and a quarter higher at 11.71. My goodness, big jumps in the wheat complex. We'll come back and talk more with Brian Hoops. We'll take a look at our livestock trade coming up next. As a side note, with all the bullishness in the grain markets, I did want to throw this out as one caveat. Look at the oats. 
when the old saying, and you know I love to harp on this, what is it that Oates knows that the rest of the market doesn't? So why Oates, all by themselves, went down seven cents last night at 7.30 and three quarters? Hmm. <laughs> okay, now let's take a look at the livestock trade. When we wrapped up last week, we had live cattle on the June contract uh, at 136.42. Now, when we wrapped up on the feeder cattle market last week, we had the May contract finishing at 161.77. When we wrapped up on the lean hog trade last week, we had the June at 118.47. If you look at the livestock summary, boy, we had some wide ranges of trade, Brian, last week, especially on the dress basis side. And all in all, that cash trade out in the plains was quite a bit higher than what we had the week before. So do you think the market will be able to build on that? Most of that strength on the dress basis is coming in the northern plains where weather was a little more adverse and, and numbers seem to be a lot tighter. It was about a dollar higher in the southern plains, and we should be able to build on that today and through the rest of this week. Outlook is for stronger cash trade. We had a pretty decent slaughter pace last week, uh, despite the Easter and, and Good Friday holidays uh, kind of affecting the Friday, Saturday kill. We still had a pretty big numbers there. So it shows us the packer demand is, is strong, and so we would look for them to be on the uh, bidding side early this week trying to secure some inventory and we think it's going to be at least a dollar to maybe even two dollars higher in the southern plains and a couple dollars higher on a dress basis up north okay uh, a couple of things on the uh, west texas intermediate crude oil market overnight wanted to pull that up it was up a buck and a half just so you know the may futures 108.45 it was very choppy. In fact, when I was driving in, it was actually a little lower this morning. And uh, if you take a look at the Dow, the Dow futures, June futures, down 28 points at 34,341. U.S. dollar index had gotten pretty high last week and added to it overnight. June futures, 299 points higher at 100.625. That could pressure ag trade eventually, maybe not now. Uh, Brian, thanks for all the help. Good to talk with you again. I appreciate it. Brian Hoops, uh, Midwest Market Solutions. Janet, we're ready to begin.